Marriage fraud refers to pretending to have intentions of marriage without actually wanting to in order to swindle money or other assets from the other party. This means my husband, Alan, didn't commit marriage fraud on me. But, this is definitely marriage fraud too, including my mill who conspired with Alan. I'm Karen, 35 years old, and I've been married for about three years. I was promoted to chief accountant at a mid-size company, earning a decent salary. On the other hand, Alan, three years older than me, works in sales at a small company and, though he already wasn't making much, the economic downturn resulted in a pay and bonus cut. I don't know the exact figures, but I've heard it's about two-thirds of my salary now. So, most of our living expenses, including utilities, were covered by my earnings. Alan was really keen on having kids. He didn't understand why I was hesitant and kept asking. At the time we got married, several women at my workplace were either pregnant or on maternity leave. This increased the workload for everyone, including me, and I wanted to wait till things settled. When I married Alan, I explained this, and he seemed understanding, saying, Karen, you're responsible, it wouldn't be good to take maternity leave as a chief in such busy times. But a month into our marriage, he began pressuring me to have a child. To top it off, my mill, who lives a 15-minute walk from our new home, started insisting. It's totally fine, dear, I'll take care of the baby, you can focus on your job. Before that, my mill and I didn't get along very well. She didn't seem to like that I wasn't quitting my job after getting married, making comments like, I don't know how good you are at your job, but neglecting my son doesn't sit well with me, or, you're just lounging around on weekends, Karen, no matter how tired you are, that's not how a wife should act. Things like that, Mima often told me about how adorable her son was, implying I was a bully to him. She'd been quite active since her husband passed, traveling a lot, and I often wondered how she managed it financially. She probably had an inheritance from her deceased husband. It felt strange that she suddenly offered, in such a soft tone, to take care of our child. When I mentioned this to Alan, he got angry and yelled, Don't you want to give my mom the joy of a grandchild? She's worried about your age and wants you to have a kid soon. It's true, but I had my reservations. However, I did want kids, so I accepted my mill's offer. My pregnancy was smooth, and I took ample maternity leave. At the strong recommendation of my mill, I returned to work six months postpartum. After returning, my position changed to assistant chief with reduced hours. My salary was cut to about two-thirds, working. But it was on par with full-time women my age. I was grateful to the company and continued. Mill was very good with my child, urging me to go back full-time. My child absolutely adored her, and though I felt a bit left out, it was a great help. About a year later, the topic of living with my mill came up. She'd hinted at it before, but after exhausting work days, just taking care of Alan and our child was enough. I didn't like the idea of living with Mill. I ignored her suggestions because it would be too overwhelming. But my Mill strongly suggested that it would be best to live together when considering raising kids. I was prepared to eventually live with my Mill, but it was a bit shocking that the topic came up just three years into our marriage. Well, they've taken care of my kids till now, so I thought maybe it was okay. But then I got called to Alan's parents' place, and I was shocked by the proposal from Alan and my mill. This house is getting pretty old, don't you think? We're considering rebuilding it. Mill said, grinning and looking into my eyes. Ah, yay, it's pretty old, and there's some leaks when it rains. Right, and lately my back's been hurting, I really want something more accessible. But going accessible is one thing, rebuilding would need hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
When my father-in-law passed, I think he left a decent inheritance, but neither Mill or Alan mentioned anything about finances. Worried, I interrupted their excited chatter about the new house. So, how are we paying for this? Co, about that, could we possibly borrow the money in your name, Karen? What? You know, Alan doesn't make much, I talked to a bank associate, and they said he might not pause the credit check. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry about that, my salary's not the best, Alan chimed in. Hold on a minute, are they serious? I can't do that. Why not, we're family, right, we'll be living together. That's true, but... You work at a reputable company, Karen, and with your title as assistant financial manager. They told us you can get a big loan. We want to build a nice home, don't we? Come on, Karen. Mom's asking so nicely, and you're gonna say no, Alan added. I, I don't know. Just trust us, okay? Feeling cornered by their aggressive push, I quickly responded, I'll think about it. I mean, their house is over 40 years old, it does need some work. But a joint loan I can understand, borrowing the entire construction cost in my name, that's just not right. Even Alan must know this, why are they both teaming up on this? I found out the reason one night when I overheard Alan on the phone. I got up to use the restroom and heard him whispering in the dark living room, words like construction cost and bank loan. I listened closer, and it seemed like he was talking to Mill. We're close to getting Karen to say yes. All she's good for is making money, after all. He's talking about me, earning money is my only redeeming quality. Stunned, I then heard an even more shocking conversation. Yay, we have the kid, he's ours. If I get custody, divorcing her won't be a problem, Karen always prioritized work over parenting. I'll argue that she's not fit to be a mom. My child, what do they mean by he's ours? And by custody, does he mean divorcing me? Confused, I then understood Alan's plan from his next words. The house will be in our names, mine and Mills, but the loan will be in Karen's name. Even if we divorce, she'll be stuck paying it off. It's all good, if we get custody and take the kids, Karen will definitely continue to pay the loan. So, the loan is under my name, and after divorcing and taking the kids, you plan to use them as leverage to make me keep paying it. No wonder you suddenly started saying we should have kids, and that you'd take care of them. My feelings shifted from shock to anger. There's no way I'll let Alan and my mill have their way. I started to hatch a plan to put them in their place. First, I told them I would handle the mortgage and have them visit house builders to get estimates. As I expected, as they talked to the contractors, the house designs and interiors kept getting more lavish. And eventually went up to nearly $400,000. Then, I nudged them, now that you've got the layout down, why not start looking for furniture? It's not always easy to find the right pieces. And just as I fought, my mill and Alan started browsing high-end furniture stores. Purchasing items and storing them in the furniture store's warehouse. After letting them splurge for about four months, Alan and my mill, who were out during the day, called me to their house. Karen, we picked the construction company and are satisfied with the estimate, so we've signed the contract. Can you get the official mortgage review from the bank? Also, we need a 10% down payment right away. That's when I dropped the bomb. Oh, sorry, I can't pay the loan. What? Actually, I bought an apartment under my name. An apartment, what are you talking about? We decided to live here. 
well, you and Mill will live here, but my kids and I have decided to live in that apartment. What on earth are you saying now? With the apartment loan, I have to pay nearly $1,000 every month, so I can't afford the other expenses. Upon hearing this, my Mill and Alan freaked out. Why are you saying this now? You agreed to pay the loan too. That's right, we've already bought over $20,000 worth of furniture. Then, I replied. I know everything, you plan to claim that I'm unfit as a wife and mother, divorce, take custody of the kids, and make me pay the entire housing loan. At this, both of them turned pale but tried to play dumb. There's no way that's true, we know you're a good mother. Seems you've been spreading rumors in the neighborhood. Saying I'm not doing housework or taking care of the kids, and even that I'm abusive. You did that to make it easier to get custody, didn't you? Upon hearing this, my mill turned beet red and went silent. Then, I confronted Alan. You've never shown me your paycheck, saying it's embarrassingly low, so I searched your room and found last year's tax decision notice, your income is higher than mine, explained that. Well, actually, I have student loans to repay. Really, from a strip club? What, what are you talking about? I found a business card from a shady company in the invoices, with a note from a girl at a strip club, come back soon, Alan. Once exposed, Alan gave in. He had fallen for a girl at that strip club, spending over $1,000 there monthly and giving her an allowance of $500. Which is why he couldn't contribute to the reconstruction costs. Then, my mill. I allowed you to work, but you never gave me money, even though you have a high income. I'm out of money, I used up the inheritance, so, I thought if I got Alan to divorce and got custody, I could get child support from you. How short-sighted, you planned to misuse that child support, didn't you? How were you going to raise the child? I immediately presented them with divorce papers, took my child, and left their house. Then I headed straight to my lawyer's office. Actually, I had recorded our previous conversation. Thanks to that, I was able to divorce him by making him pay alimony, divide our assets, and child support. In particular, Alan's salary deception was pursued by a lawyer as something close to marital fraud. So I was able to get a hefty alimony. This has made the mortgage payments for my and my child's condo a lot easier, and it's been a huge help. On the other hand, my mill and Alan had signed a construction contract. So they had to pay a 10% cancellation fee, amounting to $40,000. For the furniture, they went nuts and had ordered custom-made pieces, so it seems they received an irrevocable bill for over $20,000. Of course, Alan didn't have that kind of money, and since my mill had almost used up the inheritance from her late husband, it seems they had no choice but to go into debt. Now, they are living a super frugal life in their old family home that started to leak. Even now, I occasionally get calls from Alan, but I assume he's just asking for money, so I totally ignore him.